Welcome back. Microsoft Windows gets its name from being a Windows-based operating system. Each program that you run opens in its own container or window. These windows share some basic functionality. Across the top is the title bar. This will often have the name of the program that you're running, as well as the name of any files that the program has open or is using. The next row will often be a menu bar. Think of the items listed across the window as drawers that you can pull open by clicking on them. The menu options will vary program to program. There will usually be a file menu containing options such as create a new document, save and print. The edit menu will normally have options including cut, copy and paste. I'll explain in a later video how to use these. Other menus may include view or a help menu. Others will depend on the program that is running. The next row will often appear to be a series of icons. This is called the toolbar. Again, the icons available will depend on the program that is running, but often they will represent items available in the menus and are meant to provide quick access to those functions such as save and basic formatting as well as cut, copy and paste again. Some newer programs have souped up this toolbar. You'll find many more functions and options. In this case, it's normally referred to as a ribbon rather than a toolbar. At the bottom of the window is often a status bar. If available, it will run right across the bottom of the window. It may have an area for reporting the status of various elements of the program. For example, whether the caps lock is on or the status of the spell checker. Down the right edge of the window, depending on what program is running and what the program is doing, you may find a scroll bar. This is used to pan down. So for example, if you're looking at a document or web page that doesn't fit in the window, you can click and drag the scroll bar to view the rest of the page or document. To perform the click and drag that's required to move the bar, move the mouse so that it is over the scroll bar. Press and hold the left mouse button down. Now while still holding the button down, move the mouse backwards and forwards. You can achieve the same scrolling effect by clicking on the arrows at the top and bottom of the scroll area. Or most newer mice have a wheel between the two buttons. You can spin this wheel to move the display or scroll as it's called. Windows can be opened by running most programs. For example, if I go through the start menu, I can click on any of the programs I find there and it will open its own window. We'll start with Notepad. Notepad is just a very basic text editor. Clicking it opens a new window ready for us to enter text. Across the top is the title bar. It's telling me that this window is running Notepad. If I'd open a specific file, the file name would be displayed here. On the right we have three buttons. The first, looking like a little dash. Click that and it will minimise the window. It looks as though Notepad has disappeared, but what it's actually done is hide it from the view. If you look at the taskbar at the bottom, you will see a blue Notepad icon. This is the Notepad logo. The icon has a white line underneath it, indicating that the program is still running. To restore it, just click on it. This restores the window to its original size and position. Next is the Maximize button. Click this and the window will change to fill the full screen. When the window is maximized, this icon looks a little different. Now it looks like two squares overlapping each other. Click this will return the window to its original size and position. You can also achieve the Maximize and Restore effect by double clicking on the title bar. Next and probably most importantly in the top right is a cross, normally a red cross. Clicking this will close the program. When you click this button, you may be prompted to save any work that you've opened, if you haven't already done so. Then the program shuts down and disappears completely from view. Windows can also be moved and resized. This is in addition to the maximize to full screen and restore that we've already seen. Let's look again at Notepad. As long as the window isn't maximized, it can be repositioned anywhere on the screen. To do this, click and hold the left mouse button down on the title bar of the window. With the mouse button still held down, move the mouse in any direction. You should find that you are also moving the window. Release the mouse button to drop the window in the new position. The window can also be resized without having to maximize it. 
If you move the mouse to the very edge of the window, you should notice that the arrow or pointer changes to a double-headed arrow. This tells you that the mouse is in a position to perform the resize. With the mouse looking like a double-headed arrow, click and hold the mouse button, and once again, move the mouse while still holding the button. You'll find that the edge that you are holding resizes as you move the mouse. Release the button to have the window resized to the new shape. Hopefully you have noticed that clicking and holding the mouse on the edge of the window only allows you to adjust the shape based on that edge. So for example, dragging the left or right edge will only allow you to adjust the width of the window, not the height. But clicking on the top or bottom has the opposite effect. I can adjust the height, but not the width. There is a way to adjust the width and height at the same time. Move the mouse to one of the corners of the window. The mouse will once again change to a double-headed arrow, but this time the arrow will be pointing diagonally. Now perform the click and drag again to resize the width and height at the same time. Knowing these techniques is very useful. It allows you to have multiple windows visible on your screen at any time. Here I have a YouTube video playing in one corner, a calculator open below that, and the next best selling novel that I'm writing on the right side. Another use for this might be to have two windows open side by side. Perhaps you're doing some internet research in one window while typing up your findings in another. You can use the drag and resize technique to achieve this effect, although there is an easier way to do it. Open the first program, in this case let's open a web browser. Now open the second window. I'll open Microsoft Word. Now click and drag the title bar. Move it to the right edge of the display. As you reach the edge of the display, you'll notice that an outline appears around the half of the display. Release the mouse while this outline is visible. The first window now fills one half of the screen and the system is asking you what you want to display on the second half. In this case, I only have one other program running, so I'll click Microsoft Word, which fills the rest of the screen. Although you can have many windows open, only one can be active at any given time. What this actually means is that you can only be working or interacting with one window at any given point. So for example, going back to the research example, I can't be clicking Google links and typing in Microsoft Word at the same time. This means that I must be able to tell Windows which window I want to interact with at any given point. To do this, just click on the program that you want to use. So I might click on a Google link to display a web page, then click on Microsoft Word to type up some details of what I've found. Then click on the web browser again to find another page, and so on. I will show you a little trick. If you have multiple windows open that are cluttering up the display, but you just want to focus on one of the windows and lose the clutter without closing all the other programs, there is a quicker way than clicking on each of the minimize buttons to hide all the windows you're not interested in. Just click and hold the mouse button on the title bar of the window you want to remain visible. Now, while still holding down the mouse button, give the mouse a fairly vigorous jiggle, left and right a few times. Hopefully, you've now just minimized everything on the screen, except the window you are still holding. You can release the mouse button now. Remember, when you minimize programs, they don't close, they're just hidden. Click on the icon in the taskbar to restore the program to its original size. Finally, if you want to minimize all windows, this will show you the blank desktop. Useful if you just want to clear your desk and start something fresh without closing everything or to find a shortcut that might be on your desktop. Press and hold the Windows key on the keyboard. It's the one with the Windows logo on it, normally found just to the left of the spacebar. While holding this down, hit the M key and release both M and Windows key together. That should leave you looking at the computer's desktop. Repeat the key com combination to have all windows restored to the previous position or size. Let's take a look at a few standard Windows applications and identify each of the Windows parts or elements we've just been discussing. Notepad we've already introduced. This is a very basic text editor. It allows for basic text entry, but doesn't offer much. 
if anything, in the way of editing or formatting that you may find in something like Microsoft Word. It's been around for many years, I think since the very first version of Windows, and to be honest, hasn't gone through many changes since that time. It still has a use today if you want to quickly jot a note or reminder then Notepad is easy and quick to use. You can find Notepad in the Start menu under Windows Accessories. Click on the Notepad icon to run the program. I already used it in an earlier example, but let's take a look again at the elements of the window. Across the top is the title bar. This lists the name of the program, and if you have any existing file open, it will display the file name. In my case, I haven't opened an existing file, so it's telling me the current name is unknown. Which basically means I've not named or saved the file yet. Below the title bar is the menu bar. The file menu can be used to access items to save the current file, open an existing or new file, or to print the current document. The edit menu has options to cut, copy and paste. More on these in a later video. There's also a find and replace option. These can be useful to replace text in a document. For example, replace all the commas with full stops. The format menu has options to enable word wrap, which will automatically adjust the width of the entered text to fit the window, and font, which allows you to change the font face of the entered text. View has options to enable or disable the status bar and to zoom the display in or out. The help menu has the option to search the web for help and to display an About Notepad window containing version and licensing information. Down the right side is the scroll bar. At the moment, this is greyed out, meaning it's disabled and can't be used because there is no text in the main window, so there isn't anything else to display. At the bottom is the status bar, which shows the zoom level and your current position in the document by line and character number. Another example of a standard Windows program is Calculator. In Windows 10, this program has been given a bit of a facelift, but most of the essential Windows elements are still there. Across the top is the title bar. On the right of the title bar are the buttons for minimize, maximize, and the cross to close the program. We don't have a menu bar or ribbon. This has been replaced with what's called a hamburger button. On the left, just below the title bar, are three bars. This is the menu button, also called a hamburger button. Click this to find the menu items that are traditionally run across the window in this section. Calculator doesn't have much use for a file, edit and view menu, so instead we can switch between various styled calculators or converters. We don't have a scroll bar or status bar, again as calculator doesn't have a need for these. There's not much else to say about calculator. You can either click on the numbers on the screen or you can type on the keypad to enter a calculation. Windows Media Player is another app that comes with Windows. It's for playing media files such as CDs, DVDs or other video and audio files that you may have on your computer. Again, we have the title bar at the top. We have a menu just below the title bar. Down the right, we have the scroll bar. Remember, this will only be enabled or visible if the contents of the window is too long to be all displayed at the same time. As far as functionality goes, Windows Media Player first shows you the library. This lists any media files that have been found on your computer. To play one of them, just double click on it. Once you have some media playing, either a video or audio, Windows Media Player switches view. You have some familiar play and pause options near the bottom. There's still a menu at the top. You can use this to switch back to the library view. Remember the technique to resize the window? If you're playing a video clip, Windows Media Player will resize the video to match the window size. Also, just as before, you can use the button in the top right to maximize the window. But there's one more trick you can do. Either double click on the video or hold down the Alt key while pressing this, press the Enter key, and finally release both keys together. This has now made the video full screen. Do either of the previous actions to restore the media to its original size and position. Finally, let's take a quick look at Microsoft's App Store. Using this, you can find lots of software for Windows. It works in a similar way to Apple's App Store or Android's Play Store. You can search and navigate around or search for specific apps. 
Just like Apple's and Android's Play Store, quite a lot of the software available is free. But do keep an eye out as there's still quite a lot of software that you will need to pay for. To install a piece of software from the Windows Store, locate the desired app, then click on Install. If it's a paid app, there will be a price listed here. Click on the price and complete the payment process. Once this is complete, you'll be able to install the application. In this session, we have identified the different parts of a window. This includes the title bar running across the top, the menu bar, again running across the top of the window, just below the title bar. Below the menu bar may be a toolbar, but depending on the application, there may be a ribbon instead. At the bottom is the status bar, and on the right is the scroll bar. We also looked at how to manipulate windows, including how to open, collapse, expand, hide, restore, maximize, resize, and move windows, not forgetting how to close them as well. We discussed what the term active window is and how this affects how you interact with windows. This included switching between open windows. We then had a look at a few different applications and identified the various parts of the windows in which they were running. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.